glad you could join me again today. We're going to talk about bad news today. I think that seems to be all that we hear on the television or on the radio and in social media. It's all about war and political upheaval and natural disasters and impending doom. And I find it rather intrusive and distracting. Bad news is just seems like too plentiful these days, and it can just keep us stirred up and worried if we aren't careful. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 33 says, Whosoever hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. I love that promise. God isn't saying that no evil will come. He isn't ignoring the bad news, but he's trying to point us to the good news. He is our protector. We don't have to walk around in fear or fear of evil. In Psalm 112, 7, we read, He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. I like that statement. It's amazing. To not be afraid, but just simply to trust in the Lord. And sometimes that seems really hard to do, doesn't it? So, so how do we do that? That's the question we want to look at today. How do we keep from being afraid with all the bad news that we hear? And how do we keep our hearts fixed and trusting in the Lord? And this was a topic that was in my uh, devotion by Spurgeon a few weeks ago. And I wanted to kind of read to you some of what he said as he talked about Psalm uh, 112 and verse 7. He said, Christian, you ought not to dread the arrival of bad news, because if you are distressed by it, how do you differ from others? Others don't have your God to fly to. They have never proven his faithfulness as you have done. And it is no wonder if they are bowed down with alarm and cowed with fear. But you profess to be of another spirit. You have been begotten again to a lively hope, and your heart lives in heaven and not on earthly things. Now, if you are seen to be distracted as others, what is the value of that grace which you profess to have received? Where is the dignity of that new nature that you claim to possess? Now, that's quite a challenge, isn't it? He's saying that we must enact faith when bad news comes. It's going to come. We can't get away from it, but we needn't be caught throwing our hands up in the air or cowering in fear. If we claim to know Christ and we have his power living within us, then we should be acting within that power, the power that gives us soundness and confidence and increased faith that fixes our heart upon the word of God. And I liked his phrase, the dignity of that new nature. We should have presence, dignity, character, qualities that point others to hope and to Christ, especially in the middle of bad news and difficult, challenging times. Without this dignity, Spurgeon says, if you should be filled with alarm, as others are, you would doubtless be led into the sins so common to others under trying circumstances. The ungodly, when they are overtaken by bad news, rebel against God. They murmur and think that God deals harshly with them. Will you fall into that same sin? Will you provoke the Lord as they do? And you know, there is another challenge for us. When bad news comes, do we sound the same as those that are without faith? Do we murmur and complain right along with them? Do we blame and create more confusion? Do we fret and stew as if we had no hope? Do we abandon God? I hope not. Spurgeon goes on to say, Moreover, unconverted people often run to the wrong means in order to escape from difficulties, and you will surely do the same if your mind yields to the present pressure. Trust in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Your wisest course is to do as Moses did at the Red Sea, to stand still and see the salvation of God. For if you give way to fear when you hear of bad news, you will be unable to meet the trouble with that calm composure which nerves for duty and sustains under adversity. How can you glorify God if you play the coward? Saints have often sung God's high praises in the fire. Then take courage, and relying in sure confidence upon the faithfulness of your covenant God, do not let your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Let not. Hmm. Do you know what that means? It means that my reaction is my choice. How I choose to respond to bad news is my choice. And when it comes, and it will come, I want to choose to be found in faith, trusting and waiting and looking to see what God's going to do. I want to choose to be that person of dignity and faith. 
I don't want to fall about in fear like a chicken with my head cut off or murmur and complain like the children of Israel, but I want to have that calm composure which nerves for duty and sustains under adversity. I want a heart that is fixed, trusting in the Lord and watching for the fulfillment of His word and His promises. And that's where the good news is. Are you focusing on that or are you focusing on the bad news? It's your choice. Your reaction is your choice. Let's focus on the Lord. Much happier there. I'll see you next week.